Good morning, Quite Comfort 101 here, and today's shout out goes to Gillis1978. He was first to say first in one of my recent videos, and thus wins his shout out. So, congratulations. Good morning, Quiet Copter 101 here with a neat new airplane. This is the beginner's airplane, the TY8 Flying Wing. It's generally in the shape of a B-2 stealth bomber. And this version, it's available in two versions, the TY8, and it's also known as the LSRC B-2. The difference between these two is the TY8 comes in this um, nice camouflage paint scheme, and the B-2 comes in jet black just looking like the, the B-2 Stealth Bomber. And both of them are the kind of models of the B-2 Stealth Bomber. Um, pretty neat flying wings. Now, again, I mentioned they're two-channel. What that means is this can only turn right or left, and you can go up or down by giving it more throttle. It'll go up, and, and it'll come down and reduce throttle. And two-channel, when I'm talking about two-channel right or left control, you control it through the controller, and if you give it left control, this motor will spin faster than that motor, turning the drone or the aircraft to the left. And if you want to turn to the right, you push right on that stick there. And this motor will spin faster than that motor, pushing the aircraft to the right. Now, I mentioned these are gyro stabilized. Uh, with, in terms of gyro stabilization, what that does is this is, will automatically... <laughs> adjust these mo the speed of these motors to keep the aircraft semi-level, okay, to prevent it from rolling over or pitching too far down or pitching too far up to stall the aircraft. Um, it will adjust the speed of the motors, um, say if it wants to pitch to the right, you know, it gets hit by a wind gust that pitches it to the, to the left like so, this motor will spin up faster to create more lift to try to level it. Similarly, if it pitches to the right, this motor will speed up to try to level it, you know, provide more lift on this wing to level it. And additionally, uh, for, to prevent fugoid oscillations, up or down movements like this, when it starts to pitch up like this, it will automatically reduce throttle on both motors to try to level it out. And if it's up and high and starting to pitch nose down, it will increase the speed of the motors to try to level it as such. So, yeah, you can get true um, uh, stabilization by just adjusting the speed of these motors. And that's how it does it, folks. Now... I mentioned this is available as the B2. The difference, I, I don't know if I went into it already, but the difference between this and the B2 is that this comes with this nice camouflage paint scheme, um, and, and it's only available in this silver color, a uh, silver grayish color. Um, the B2 comes in jet black, looking like the original B2. Additionally, um, there's a price difference between whether you get one, two, or three batteries uh, between in the B2, uh, but this one here is on, comes available with two batteries. I don't see an option that, um, that you can select additional or less batteries, but this one came with two batteries, one installed in the aircraft and one in the package. Now, let me talk about the B2. Again, I mentioned the B2 is black. Um, it's available with one, two, or three batteries with the LED bars or without the LED bar lights. Um, the thing is, currently, they're all the same price for that B-2. So if you are interested in one of these aircraft, I recommend taking a look at that B-2 right now <laughs> before they discover that their prices are in error because right now they're all the same price for the B-2 version um, at the uh, lowest price. Part. It's about $10 cheaper than this is what I'm trying to say, folks. So if you're considering this, take a look at that B-2 real quick until they figure out the mistake that they made uh, having all their... Uh, versions or their options available at the same price. Now I mentioned this comes with a LED light bar. The LED light bar lights up, of course, to provide uh, of it, the potential for flying at dusk. I wouldn't fly this after dark because that's not legal, folks, in the U.S., I don't think. Uh, but you can fly this with the LED light bars and you should be able to see it in, at dusk time or early in the morning. So if you want to get some night flying, semi-night flying, you can do such with this particular aircraft. And I'll show you that light up here shortly. Uh, I mentioned, uh, I didn't mention the battery. It comes with a 300 milliamp per hour battery with a white low C connector. Now, even though this has a white low C connector, um, it, I don't think it's going to be easy to put uh, other uh, generic batteries with a white low C connector because that connector is buried deep down at the bottom of this and it's hard to get your fingers in there. And the way they've got around this is they've encased the uh, battery in this uh, battery casing with the uh, 
connector already oriented toward where the uh, connection point is. And to get this in, all you do is slide it in like so, and then push both of these tabs forward, and that locks it into place like so. Okay, now there is an on-off switch on this, and to turn it on, you press it forward like that, and you can see the lights. I don't know if you can see those lights like that, but they're, they're pretty colorful and very bright, um, even in daylight. But let me turn this on real quick. I want to see what the lights do when this turned on. So, okay, so there they are. When you connect it to this, they stay uh, full, uh, full on instead of blinking like they were there. If they're blinking, that means they've lost connection with the controller. But let's try out the throttle right now. And give it a little throttle. Now I'm going to turn left. And this, this one's spinning faster. Turning right, this one's spinning faster to turn it right. So it does work. <laughs> okay. You know, I've seen, you know, I've flown two channels, many two channels, and this system does work. So we'll see how well it does with this particular plane when we take it out into the field. Now, this 300 milliamp per hour battery, let me turn this off, is supposed to give you up to eight minutes of flight time. I don't know if that's true or not, but we will see so when we take it out into the field. Okay, other things about the plane, um, it comes with this controller, very basic controller. Um, it just has an on-off switch here. And again, this is your throttle control. You can just go up or down. And this is your right-left control for yaw or roll. <laughs> this is going to roll a little bit when it turns as, as those speed up. Additional buttons on this, you can turn those lights off to save battery power by a quick press of this light switch here. And there is another button for rates. And by pressing this button here, that will enable the aircraft to pitch further right or pitch further left to make sharper turns. So I, I want to demonstrate that too when we get out in the field. Now the things that come with this particular aircraft include uh, instruction manual. Now the instruction manual is very basic and it actually shows a different airplane, but it's a, I guess it's a two-channel plane. They're all the same. I forgot to mention one thing though. This version, the TY-8, comes fully assembled folks there's nothing that you need to do you don't need to install these wheels i'm not sure about the the b2 version yet because i don't have the b2 version <laughs> but that might require some installation of these wheels I, i've seen that in the past with two channel aircraft you have to install wheels this one you know it was already assembled fully assembled ready to go out of the package it even had the battery installed and it was fully charged when i got it i don't know if that's going to be true for your version if you get this but mine was ready to go out of the box. Um, other things you get in the box, again, I, mine came with a spare battery. I don't see that listed in the listing, whether this is supposed to have a spare battery, but mine did. And it also came with a charger for this particular uh, little aircraft. You can charge this either using a wall charger, or you could actually plug this into the USB port of your computer to charge this battery because it's such low milliamp hour at 300 that this should not be a problem to charge this up in a reasonable amount of time. Other things that you get in the package is a spare set of propellers in case you ding those up. A screwdriver and I'm not sure what the screwdriver is for. I guess it was, no it's not for the installation of these things. So <laughs> I'm not sure what the screwdriver is for folks because these propellers are not held in place by screws. They're just held in place by friction so but you do get a spare or a screwdriver for your particular aircraft. If you so, if you need a screwdriver, you got one. <laughs> you get the controller, folks. Now the controller, I didn't go into this yet, but the controller has a lot of inoperative buttons that do nothing. Again, the only buttons that do something are the light button, the on-off switch, and the rates button. But uh, it is powered by three AAA batteries. So, if you want. You know, standard AAA batteries. All I got in there is super heavy duties from the dollar store. They should be sufficient for this particular aircraft. Um, the range on this, I'd, I'd estimate to be about, uh, I don't know, 80 meters, something like that, less than 100 meters. Um, the thing is, this airplane is going to be really hard to see once you get out to that range. So you you want to you're going to want to keep it generally close because it is a relatively small airplane at 355 meters, I believe, total wingspan on this. So that's about it. Again, available in two versions. I'll include the links to both versions below. You can check it, see if those prices are still the same on the B2, because that, that is a big error. Because I'm not going to let the, my sponsor know yet until they, they see this video. So if you want to grab that B2 while it still has the pricing error, uh, 
feel free to do such. Okay, so let's take this out to the field, folks, and see how it flies. Hope you enjoy this flight. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and welcome to Pleasant Ridge Park near Erie, Pennsylvania, for the inaugural flight of the TY-8, the maiden flight. Okay, I already have this connected to the controller. It's ready to go. So all we need to do is give it some throttle and get it in the air. The wind's coming from the north, or the south there. South is that direction. The way I'm going to launch this, folks, is I'm going to hold it by the edge of the wing, give it throttle, and then give it a toss. So here we go. Takes right to the air. <laughs> okay, let's see the turn. We got a wind, giving it more throttle. The wind's bouncing it about. And when I bound this to the controller, folks, I had it in a nose up attitude. And I'm seeing that right now that I need to recalibrate the gyros right now. See how that's just hanging in the air there? So I'm going to lower this and we're going to land it and restart it. And this time I'm going to point it. <laughs> I had it on my little level leveling pad here, but I had to point it that way. Let's get a little speed on it by pointing it this way. Actually, I got to turn it off and then turn off the controller. Turn the controller back or turn the drone back on the airplane. Pointing it that way and turning on the controller. And I'm hoping this will recalibrate those gyros so it doesn't do that nose up pitch like that anymore. So let's try it again, launching it again. It just did a roll. It just did a roll. The wind is too strong for it today. I'm trying to bring it back to me. Don't want to come this way. So we're going to call it quits here today, folks. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm going to try one more thing. One more thing is to put some weight on this. Right, let's, let's try that. Okay, I hope that I had some putty in my bag there so I could put some weight on this, but no putty. But there is mud around here, so I put some mud on the nose. Let's see if that helps keep the nose down on the airplane. Okay, so turning it on again. There we go. On switch. On. It's on. And again, this time... I want it nose down, a little bit nose down, and turning on the controller, binding it to the aircraft, we should be good to go. And notice I've moved closer to the tree line here, the idea being I want to hopefully cut down on the amount of wind this is seeing. So let's launch it again. Well, that did take care of the nose down problem, that mud. <laughs> I think the mud came off. No, it's still on there. A little bit of it's on there. Let's see if that can still fly. Again, launching it again. New. Maybe I need to throw it into the wind. The wind's coming from that direction. There we go. Now, I want to keep it. Now, this wind's only about five mile an hour, people. It does not like wind at all. Uh, what can I say? Let's see if I can do a launch from the ground, see what happens. So I'm taking it over here, taking that rubber band off, that does not seem to help. Let's see if we can do a launch from the ground. Okay, and again I'm going to uh, recalibrate the gyros by Giving it a nose down pitch, I'm going to have to put it on some type of elevation like that. The nose, pitch the nose down a bit. That start up. Okay, that should, let's see what that does. Binding. Let's see if that calibrates the gyros any. And remember, I want to try to take off from the ground. So we'll see if this has capability of doing such in the dirt. Yeah, it did. Took off. Reducing throttle. It really is tail heavy. Real tail heavy. I think this is mainly meant for indoor flying, folks, in your local gym. Because outdoors, it just does not like any wind at all. 
because it buffets it quite a bit. Turning off those lights give us a little more power. But there we go. That's the TIE 8. Launched from the ground. And I did not put any more, I took that dirt off because that didn't seem to help. Um, and even this uh, calibration I did, that nose down calibration, doesn't seem to help much either. It's really squirrely, isn't it? <laughs> there we go. Again, indoor flyer, I'm guessing, only. Outdoor flyer, not so much. Uh -uh. So let's see if we can keep it in the air for the remainder of the flight here. Reducing throttle a little bit to bring it down. Turning it, turning it, turning it. Um, this gyros on this, I don't know. They, I guess they are trying to keep it stable, but stable is a relative term. <laughs> Let's go to higher rate. I don't know the higher rate, if that helps any at all. Not so much. But yeah, indoor flyer only, folks. This is meant for gymnasium flying in the winter. And I guess that's why they released it this time of year. Let's see if I can turn it to the right. I'm being real gentle with the controls. I don't want to flip it. It, fl it tends to flip if you over give it too much control. I don't. And well, oh, oh, there, there, there. See. I gave it hardly any control. That's the B-2 stealth bomber. It's starting to get weak, the motor. And it bounces around quite a bit, don't it? Bring it around that way. So, you know, more or less all you can do with this is right and left turns. It's meant for, again, for beginner flyers to learn to do right and left turns. But again, it's meant for beginner flyers indoors, flying in your local gym. Because this one has a hard time with wind. <laughs> one overhead. And it launched readily, didn't it? From the ground. Uh, 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 see, the wind hits it and buffets it quite easily. So, careful. you got to give it a little bit of altitude there. So he has time to regain control <laughs> of itself. Slow flyer, isn't it? Real slow flyer. Again, another reason for saying this is an indoor flyer only. Indoor only. But there we go around. It's, I'm giving it some altitude here. We're up about 20 feet, 30 feet. Ooh, it's climbing high. Cutting back on the throttle. We're too high. When you get too high, I'm going to get buffeted by the wind. Bringing it back down here. And here comes that wind. I can feel it. Whoa! <laughs> Did you see that, folks? It rolled over. It was flying inverted there for a while. Interesting plane, TY-8 and the B-2. The black one's the B-2, I don't have that one. Okay, coming around, coming around. See how much flight time we can get out of this. It really did help to come over here closer to the trees. <laughs> Cutting back the throttle, bringing it back down. We're too high again. Gonna throttle coming down too quickly. It uh, does not glide very well. <laughs> you cut back a throttle, it comes down like an elevator. 
coming turning to the right gentle gentle turns I'm not sure about the you know one thing I want to check yes when we get toward the end of the flight here is on that gyro stabilization is it actually working <laughs> so and the way I can check that is let's do that let's bring it down let's see if I can land it let's see if I can land it Yeah, I can land it. But the way to check the gyro stabilization is to give a throttle and move it right and left and hear if those motors change pitch, you know, as they try to adjust to the gyro. So let's see if this does have gyro stabilization. I'm not seeing it. I'm not hearing it. This should be going, eh, eh, eh. And it ain't really doing it. So I'm not sure the gyros are actually working in this, folks. <laughs> I have to say that. Being honest, but let's see if we can get back in the air again. Okay, the wind's coming from my back right now, but let's see if I can get it in the air. No, it's it's almost out of power. Let's try going this way. There we go. Got it in the air. Can I keep it in the air? I'm almost giving it full throttle, so yeah, the batteries are getting low. And yeah, that's its flight time, folks. So that's the TY-8 beginner aircraft, not for outdoor flying, <laughs> as we've seen here. You know, wind really tosses this around. Um, the gyro stabilization, I question that, because, again, I, as I'm moving it right or left, up or down, we should be hearing uh, loud pitch changes of the motors, and I'm not hearing... Okay, I put a second battery in here. I'm not going to fly it again because the wind's picking up, but um, I confirmed it does have some gyro stabilization. Um, I put it in high rate, and you can hear it better. In low rate, the stabilization is pretty low, but in higher rate, uh, when you switch it to high, it does improve it. And let's show you, demonstrate that. Hear that? Hear the pitch change on the motors? So yeah, it does have stabilization, gyro stabilization, but really not enough to counter any wind like we have today. And, and again, it's just a real gentle wind that we got here today. Um, let me see if I can fly it in this wind in high rate. Let's see if that has any help or does any change. I'm going to hand launch it again. So here we go, like this. Yeah, go to high rate. <laughs> and that stabilization comes on a little bit better. In low rate, it's, oh, oh, even, even in high rate, any buffet of wind will will knock it out of the, the air like that. Did you see that? Got hit by some wind and so, but yeah, it's stabilized, but uh, a highly unstable design. The stabilization's having a hard time with it. <laughs> it almost went upside down. Uh, okay, coming around again. Here, let's get it up there some, let's see how high we can go. Then again, I gotta be careful. If, if I go too high, the wind will blow it away. It's just hovering in the wind there. But we'll fly it, the second battery, in high rate, the whole, the whole way. They give those gyros a little bit better chance of demonstrating their effectiveness. Let's go downwind. And turning it around. <laughs> it's just not being able to buff it that wind or fight that wind reducing throttle hoping it comes down oh, no, they flipped it okay we're gonna call quits again not an outdoor flyer it is gyro stabilized but it's a highly unstable design <laughs> so that stab stabilization doesn't seem to help it much again mainly for indoor flying outdoor flying uh, so okay it's quad cup 101 giving it a second chance but no <laughs> quad cup 101 hope you enjoyed this flight Quadcopter 101, signing out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So 
Give it a try, folks.